Hey guys, so it's Professor Ward here. I'm over at Mercy College. And what I thought I'd do is walk you through uh, the development of a song from first idea through the whole song. And I'm gonna be using a piece of software called Reason. And uh, why don't we just dive in and I'll talk as um, we go along so you can see what's happening. So Reason is pretty cool. It has a couple of different menus and different windows and different ways it looks. This is the mixer page. So I have the various parts down here, all the different tracks, and I can add effects up here. And over here is where I change the tone of things with an equalizer. Then we have compressors and gates, uh, a master compressor. So this is where you would do the mixing of your project as you're going along. It's really important that you hear things the way they're supposed to sound um, as you're developing the piece. And of course, when everything's done and you're, you're happy with how the music sounds, you're gonna do a final mix on this page. Now, one of the cool things about Reason is that it has a lot of different instruments and we'll go through uh, what some of these things are and there's also effects. So here I have a kind of limiter uh, effect here, I have a reverb, I have something, another reverb here, I have something to create a, a sort of a watery sound there. This is a um, compressor on an instrument I call tri-bass, so this is a synthesizer, and we'll hear that. And then over here I have a couple of loop players, so I've loaded in some different drum sounds here. Um, I can play you something there. Let's hear drum sound number one. And here's drum sound number two. And here's drum sound number three. And then uh, I have some other drums as well. So I had a few here. We heard that one already. And there's that. And so I decided I like the combination of Easy Rider and the G Rider. And uh, we'll hear those together in a bit. Over here is an electric piano patch. And up here, what do we have? We have some more percussion, um, a shaker, um, congas, and then I have uh, an old 1960s organ, a farfisa. And that's what I'm using on this part of the song. Um, one other thing I should just mention is that um, what this device does is it slices up an audio recording into different drum hits. So um, if I play it, you can see it scroll through the different sounds. And you do some pretty cool things with this. You know, we can filter it. And filter it with a resonant sound. Um, so what I, the, the other view here, so I showed you the mixer and then I showed you the rack. And now I'm going to take you into the arrangement view. And this is where you do the MIDI programming. And usually what you're going to do is you're going to hook up a keyboard and play the sounds there. But you can also um, create an empty clip and draw in some of the sounds. I think I might have done that on some of these. Um, so this song began when I was driving home. I had an idea for a song that would be kind of electronic dance music, but also a little bit of Brazilian samba. And so the first thing that I came up with was the electric piano part. So let's hear that. And you can see over here on the left, this is a keyboard. So that first chord over there are those notes on the keyboard. So that's what we got going on there. And then I decided what I would do. Let me just mute some other things and we'll bring them in one at a time. So this is my original, original idea. So let's hear that with the bass part. 
And the basic part comes in on the second half. So let's uh, zoom out a little so we can hear all of that. And here we go. Okay, and then as I mentioned, I like these two drum parts. So here's the easy light part here. Oh, it's not in the intro, so let me skip ahead to the verse, or sorry, the chorus. Find the right chorus. Um, so this is uh, just added some extra parts to what we've just heard so far. Here's with the easy light drum set. see that I uh, shortened this right here in the middle to create a little gap uh, and I've also added an extra note that wasn't in the pattern just for fun. Now I had that other pattern here the G rider pattern, pattern and I did a similar thing two together, we'll hear just the drums here for a moment. So you put that with the uh, bass and the electric piano and it's starting to sound pretty good. You know, I've added some effects here, and I can um, take those effects off if I can remember them. I think we got it. So here's without the effects. That sounds pretty good. But what the effects do is they give it a little bit of depth. Very dry sounding. So I'm adding some reverberation. Then we had some on the bass. I forget what we had here. I think it was now I've forgotten what we had. Uh, but that's all right. We're not going to stick in this very long. Um, so that's kind of cool. And the other thing that you can do here is you can make some changes to the sound. And all I did with these two drum parts. Here's what they sounded like originally. Whoops, let's solo those up. And I just took a little bit of the low end off. So I have a little display here to show you what that looks like. I put a little filter in. And let's do that on the next channel as well. This is just a little heavier without that sound. So that makes them blend a little better. All right. So anyway, that was the original idea for the chorus section. 
And one of the things I try to do as a songwriter is come up with a contrasting section for the verse. So I'm going to go back to my arrangement page and I'll show you. Uh, oh, I didn't show you the organ part. Let me just show you that. Um, so this was the organ part I came up with. And this is a, a very typical Brazilian style thing to have this kind of sound. So one of the things on this display, I showed you the piano roll for the different notes, but these bars below it represent the strength of every note. And you can see some notes here are almost transparent uh, and they're very soft notes. And they're just like little short notes to kind of make it jazzy. You probably won't even hear it in context. So anyway, that's that part. Now let's go to the verse section. And uh, we'll just, I'll let this play. Let me just come out of this. So I'm using some different ideas in the drums. things about working on just the chorus and just the verse, and this is one of the things I really like about Reason, is that I have a different way of arranging which allows me to take those individual sections and string them together. So here you, you see I have the intro first, just drums and piano, I mean bass and piano, and then um, I brought in the verse, and then went to a chorus, and then went back to a verse, and then went to finish the song. Now. Um, that's a pretty short song, and it's not nearly done, but that was my first idea. And I had a working title called Dramen Samba, which you can see up here. So let me just close that up. And at this point, it's taken on a new title, and that title is called Praia del Foro. Um, and that is the name of a beach in Rio de Janeiro. It's actually wrong here. It's Del Foro. Um, but that's the name of a beach in Rio de Janeiro, which is kind of what it reminded me of. And you can see here, I've got a much more interesting form with an intro, very simple, then a verse, then a chorus, then the verse again, and a chorus again, and then a breakdown section where we're just going to really focus on the drums and the bass, and then finally an outro section. And over here is a fade out. You'll also notice sometimes there's like brightly colored things, uh, and then there's faintly colored things. So these are, uh, this is a way of me overriding what was in the verse. So the first time we hear the verse, I didn't want to hear these flute parts. So I just put blank clips here to cover those up so that when I play this arrangement, I won't hear all that. And you can see I've added some actual uh, program drums here. I can show you that. I've still got my um, shaker and congas and uh, G rider and easy. I've also got a flute part from a, a sampler. And I have some real flutes that was me playing the flute into a microphone and recording. I'm not, uh, I don't sound as good as the real flute, but it made a nice um, background to have a lot of flutes on this. Uh, and then I have my bass again and my electric piano and my organ, but I've also added uh, a pad, and a pad is a sound that just kind of sits there and kind of fills the space. So the first time the chorus comes in, we don't hear the pad. I've got an empty clip here, but after that, we'll hear the pad come in. And then I had an extra pad, a different pad here at the very end of the song, and then I had a bass that we hear in the second verse, just to kind of double what's going on with my triangle bass. Um, so let's see how it's changed. So let me go back to the 
um, block mode and let's take a look at the verse and let's give that a listen. So I'm just going to unmute everything. So what are some things going on here? So I have this drum part that I've added. And this particular drum is like a drum machine. And I can program my own patterns here. So I'm not stuck with a loop that somebody else has created. So a little samba pattern here. And we can do different patterns. That pattern I use at the end so we can stop. Just a little clave rhythm and some ride cymbal. And you can see I programmed, if you click on the select button, you can see the pattern for each drum. Let's see, we have a pattern here. And it's just a kick part with a strong kick and a weaker kick. Um, so this is where you do the drum programming. And then when you go back to the um, arrangement view, you see I'm using pattern A1, and then I'm switching to pattern A2, and then I'm switching to pattern A1 again. So I'm able to go back and forth between some of the different drum patterns I've created. Now the flute part, this is what the, um, the sampled flute sounds like. And just to show you that, let's find the sample flute. Here it is. And so these are different recordings of a real flute. And if we give that a listen, let me just uh, unmute everything here. Everything's unmuted. That's the flute. Pretty nice sound. So that's my melody. And as I mentioned, I went and I played it. Let's see what that sounds like. That makes a nice blend between the two. Um, what else did we add to this section? I've got, um, yeah, I think it's all pretty straight ahead, except that we have this bass part here. That just sort of adds an extra layer. All right, so that's what happens in the verse and in the choruses. Um, you can see I did a lot of editing on the flute to kind of get um, some of the breaths out and things like that. So that's the flute part. Let's do this. I'm going to solo the real flute and the fake flute. So that's what it all sounds like there. And uh, what else we got going on? Uh, I have something else solo. There we go. Um, so I mentioned I added a couple of pads. So let's take a look at those. Here is the chorus pad. So it's kind of a funny sound with a lot of echo on it. The other thing that I did is I have a synthesizer at home and I recorded the synthesizer track. So you can actually, if I, uh, if I go in and edit this, that's what the, the waveforms of the synthesizer looks like. It plays along with the flute 
melody. So if we listen to all of the flutes and the synthesizer, it sounds like this. Is good now I also mentioned I did a breakdown section and so for this using some different drum patterns that I programmed some different loops um, adding a conga part adding the shaker part That's that. And then um, for the end of the song, I actually copied the chorus. That's another cool thing about this. You can just copy and paste different parts of the song together. Um, so instead of being 16 bars, this is only eight bars long, but otherwise it comes right from the chorus. And I added some things. I mentioned I have this major minor pad here. We've got congas in and shaker and the whole nine yards, and it sounds like this. And then you go into the song mode instead of the block mode, and you chain the different blocks together. So I have the two verses, I have the two choruses, I have the breakdown, I have that outro section. And like I said, I added a fade out for the end of the song. I uh, put a different pattern in on this verse for some reason. Um, I muted the flutes there, I muted the doctor solo on the first chorus and, and so on and so forth. So um, why don't I play the song from beginning to end and Enjoy it. Here we go. <laughs> 